everyone, Alex here. I am in my beautiful studio in Texas right now, and the sun is shining and the windows are open, so you're probably gonna hear some noise, but it is worth it for this breeze. And today I'm gonna show you how to paint this Indian paintbrush template. This is available in the bundle of Texas wildflower templates that I sell from my studio. And I'm gonna be using my essential watercolor kit, which is also available. And you can find all the information about this as well as links to free guides and other YouTube videos and my Facebook group at welcome.thegardenstudio.art. And you can find that link in the video description. But I'm gonna use this kit today and show you how I use watercolor techniques to paint this Indian paintbrush. Texas is known for its wildflowers, especially this time of year in the springtime. You're gonna see blue bonnets all over the place and this is called an Indian paintbrush. And they are traditionally red and green. And I'm just gonna wake up my paints here with my pipette and all of this comes in the essential watercolor kit. I'll wake up my paints a little bit and then start mixing up some colors here. And I'm gonna go ahead and also use the brushes that come in the kit for this painting. I have a couple paper towels off to the side. Now the watercolor techniques that I'll be using today I describe fully in the Foundations of Watercolor class and I'll put the link to that in the description as well. But hopefully you'll be able to follow along just fine. I'm gonna zoom in. There we go. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna point out is that when we're looking at an Indian paintbrush, the stem and a lot of the leaves and sepals are green and then the outside of the leaves are red. It's a really unique plant that has a kind of unusual petal and leaf display. So we're gonna need some greens and reds. And using this kit, I am going to grab some of my red here. Okay, and it's always a good idea to have a scrap piece of paper available so you can test things out. And I'm going to add a little bit of orange to that, this golden yellow color to warm it up just a little bit. Okay, and that warms that up nicely and I want it to be a little more vivid so I'm gonna add some more pigment to it. You always wanna rinse your brush off in between grabbing different colors to make sure that they don't get kind of cross contaminated. There we go, that's a nice color. And we're gonna need a dark green and of course the kit comes with a couple of green paints as you can see here. Um, I might start with the sap green color and then darken it up by mixing some other colors in. So I kind of want to get something that's almost a hooker's green. So I have my ivory black here and I'm gonna mix in a little bit of my golden yellow. Believe it or not, that can make a nice almost olivey green color. Needs a little more yellow mixed in. Okay, and we can always test that on our scrap piece of paper. And I'm gonna take some of that and mix it into my sap green to darken it up. Okay. Okay, so I have a pretty realistic looking green there. Now, kits are so easy to clean out if you have some paper towels on hand. So if you mix up the wrong color or too much of one color, you can just go right in here with a paper towel and clean that out. And of course, there's so much information we can cover about mixing up green paints. But let's go ahead and mix up our own green here as well as using the convenience mix. So I'm putting some golden yellow there and I have some blue that I'm gonna mix in. And of course, that's gonna give us a nice green color. Okay, mix in a couple different blues and tone it down a little bit. We definitely need some more yellow mixed in here. Okay, we're getting there. And mixing paint is just something that's gonna take time and patience to achieve. I'm gonna put a touch of black just to darken it up a little bit more and a little bit more blue. All right, let's check out what this color is looking like. That's pretty good, I like it. Okay, so we're gonna move our colors off to the side here. And then I have our Indian paintbrush template. Now these are ready to paint and they're on watercolor paper already. So once we have our colors mixed up, I'm just gonna be using some of the wet into wet technique. I grabbed my smaller brush 
And I'm going to start by painting the areas that I know are green. And you can find reference photos if you need to. And we're just very carefully going to paint in the areas that we know are green and start to drop our green mixes in. Okay, now remember with watercolor, you can always get darker by adding more layers, but you can't always get lighter. So we start light and then we slowly build up our colors to get darker. Okay, so I'm dropping in paint to where the surface is wet already. Being very careful, very precise. We don't want to go too far out of our lines. You want to keep a wet edge where you're working so you don't get any hard edges. And as you're painting, if you want to change up your colors a little bit and have them flow together, you can let them flow with that wet into wet look. Okay, we can bring that out a little bit. And then we can blend it if it gets too dark for us, right? So we have some wet into wet here, just dropping it in, see what's gonna happen. The paint won't go outside of the line of water, so we're able to blend and mix things pretty easily. And I can dry my brush off off to the side and then blend that color out a little bit too and soften those edges. With watercolor, you do have to work fairly quickly and you know, I my window's open like I said, and there's a breeze, so you have to take those factors into consideration as well. There we go, painting down. And you'll be able to use this video and the image of this painting as a reference for your own painting to know where the green is supposed to go and where the red is supposed to go. So I think that's pretty handy. Okay, I'm going to keep painting the green areas in using wet into wet and some wet on dry. And I'll speed this video up a little now as I go about painting it. What I always remind my students is that slow and steady is going to win the race here. With watercolor, you have to balance between moving quickly and yet slow enough to be precise with your brush because we do want to keep that wet edge. We want to move fast enough that we get nice blending, that we can do the wet into wet before the paint starts to dry. But we also need to move slow enough that our lines are precise and beautiful. So move slowly, getting your brush and all those little nooks and crannies. Letting the paint do its thing. And we're gonna keep one side of the stem darker than the other. Give the illusion of that light hitting the stem from one side and casting a shadow onto the other. Okay, so we have our initial wash of green here. And where it's dry, we can go in with our red now. Um, but you don't wanna put it anywhere too close to where it's still really wet. And I'm gonna go in with wet on dry for some of these that are not touching any wet paint. So we can just paint these little tiny pieces in. Tiny strokes. I always recommend when you paint flowers that you work on petals that aren't next to each other. So you don't want them to bleed into each other. So you can kind of hop and skip around the page. Now we're gonna do a little wet into wet on some of these. So you can see that I've just put a layer of wet paint down, but I wanna have a little bit more vibrancy where it's coming out of these leaves. So I'm gonna drop a little extra red here and let the water move it around. And if the water needs a little help, you can dry your brush off and then blend it in. Just like that. There we go. Okay, back to my red mix here. And again, just working on the petals and the red areas that aren't touching anything right now so that it doesn't bleed. 
green paint is dry there so I can paint that one in. Take a little bit of my darker color again and drop it in here. Contrast is what makes a painting look good. So we want to have some areas where it's a bit darker. And again, if you need to, you can rinse your brush off, dab it dry on the paper towel, and blend the darker colors into the lighter areas. That'll give you a nice gradient. We achieve really beautiful looks in watercolor when we layer things. So it's okay if you work through what I call some ugly stages because you do have to work in those layers and slowly build in your details and depth. So hopefully you can already start to see what this beautiful Indian paintbrush flower is going to look like as we near the end of our first layer here. As that first layer dries we can go back in now and paint the areas that were bordering the wet areas because they won't bleed into each other anymore. And then for this petal up here, this is kind of one of the bigger petals we're going to fill in. So I'm going to start by putting a layer of our red paint in. Like so. Grabbing some of the darker mix. And again, I just make it darker by adding a bit more pigment to that. Okay, so I'm going to take a little of my darker mix and drop that in down here. And you want to be very careful and precise around the edges of the green leaf. I'm going to blend this, clean my brush off, dab it dry, blend that together like so and give it some shape just like that. Okay, and then I'm just going to work my way back down the stem again. By now most of the red has dried and I like getting these variations in color here. So some of the red is a little darker, some is a little lighter. That's more true to life. So you know the sun will be shining on something or a breeze moves a petal. Contrast is where things are really going to come to life in your paintings. Okay, so really I'm just kind of filling in the areas that I left blank before. And watercolor is transparent, so if you paint over the green, you're going to be able to see some of that coming through, which is why I encourage you to take your time, not rush things. Make sure you kind of twirl your brush around and get to the point of the brush. And you're going to make the areas that are lighter red, you're going to make them stand out more when you paint a darker red next to them. So keep that in mind as well as you're working your way down the flower. We have these tiny little stamen that come out of them that are yellow. So I'm kind of leaving those alone till the very end when we'll put those yellow drops on. And you can see how many different colors we can get just by adding a little more pigment or a little more water. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things about watercolor is no two strokes are going to be alike. You can download the traceable line drawing of this Indian paintbrush for free. The link for that is in the description. You can check out the other Texas wildflower templates as well. Okay, so we have our base layer down. Let's go back to green. So I'm gonna rinse my brush off and we're gonna go with our darker green color now because we're gonna start adding in the shading, the details, the contour line. So I've mixed up a darker green. I twirl my brush around in it and kind of scrape it on the edge of the palette to get the excess off. And this is where we want to make it really clear what we're looking at. So we can have contour lines Contour lines follow the shape and the growth of the plant, so kind of following the stem line down, where the leaves come out. This is a really good place to have different colors of green, so dark, light, all different colors. And this is where we can show where a different leaf is. Okay, like right here, this is the stem underneath. A little bud so we can show that by adding some shadow and contour lines really make a painting come to life 
And like I said earlier, we're gonna have it be darker on this right side. So that's as if the light is coming from the left and casting a shadow onto this back side of the stem. And we can let that dry and come back and do another layer. I'll rinse my brush off and go back and add some contour lines to the buds as well. They're not all dry yet, so I might wanna be a little more patient and let them dry, but same idea. You're adding some contour lines in the direction that the flowers are going. Okay, and you don't want everything to be the exact same color because then you're not gonna see any of the different petals or any of the contrast. So you do wanna paint things so that you see some light and some dark. I'm gonna clean my brush off again and go for my lemon yellow here. Okay, and with that lemon yellow, I'm gonna be very careful as I just paint the little stamen that are on some of these flowers. And if you want to, you could paint them just red like everything else. And the last few details that I have to paint in here. Okay, there we have it. That is our finished Indian paintbrush painting. Using the Alex's Garden Studio Essential Watercolor Kit and a pre-printed watercolor sheet that is available from my studio. You can also download the traceable line drawing for free at the link below. And check out the bundles I have available on my website. I have bundles of templates available, all different kinds of Texas wildflowers. So there's ragwort and blue bonnets and buttercups and Mexican hats and Indian paintbrushes and all different kinds of beautiful wildflowers. So I hope you'll check that out. And I can't wait to see what you create. Make sure you hop on over to welcome.thegardenstudio.art and check out the links that are there. Join the free Facebook group, other tutorials, guides, videos. You're going to find a ton of stuff on that page. So I'd love to see you over there. And I'm excited to see what you paint. Happy creating, friends. See you soon. Mm -hmm.